Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. Join with me as we press in to discover how to walk in that place where we know that we know that what God has promised us, He will fulfill. I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. I'm going to be sharing quotes from a sermon that I found as I've been doing research for a totally new documentary on the man. I have found several messages that I'm not aware of uh, being currently published, but they really bless me. And I know that this message will bless you and strengthen you because we are in challenging, perilous times and we need to know uh, those promises are ours and that what God has said, He will surely fulfill. So if you're ready, let's pray. Let's press in and let's receive what the Lord has for us today. So, Father, we come in that name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. And we humble ourselves under your mighty hand. Father, I thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Let each person be touched, blessed, encouraged, strengthened, so that not one person leaves the same, but they stand fully persuaded that they know the precious promises are theirs, that they are yes and amen. And Father, your word will not fail. Further, that those promises would do a work in us, changing us, that we become partakers of your very nature. I thank you that each person will be blessed and that Jesus will get all the honor, all the glory, and all the power in this message, in the name that's above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. You know, we face major challenges in this hour. Maybe you're standing for a loved one and your children are backslidden and the enemy seeks with a lot of evidence to fully convince you that it is simply too late. It is too far gone. You're standing for a healing or you need a financial breakthrough and everything declares it is too late. And then of course he comes and accuses you because we dwell in these fallen, frail earthen vessels, and we make mistakes. And we wonder, God, have I blown it? Is it too late? Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the mighty Holy Spirit, that in our weakness, He comes and He perfects His wonderful strength to change us and to bring us to the place that we might know and stand fully assured. Go very quickly to Ephesians chapter 1, and we're looking at verses 3 and 4. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. And it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Every spiritual blessing, every blessing that you need, you were blessed with. Think about that. But see, the problem is, that for us, a blessing is simply those nice words. You think about, you know, you go into the store and you're buying a birthday card and you find one with just great words that share something that sounds good. And that's how we see a blessing. But a blessing is a declaration. It is a prophetic declaration over your life. It is a word filled with life that has the capacity not just to bring forth what God desires in your life, but to change you. Because the promises, as we lay a hold of them, we become partakers of the very divine nature so that we walk and talk like Him. Because how can two walk together unless they are in agreement? Smith said this, When He blesses, no one can curse. When God is with you, it's impossible for anyone to be against you. When God has put His hand upon you, Every way will be open with a benediction to others. The greatest thing that God has allowed us to come is into this plan of distributing His blessings to others. And I pray that you get a hold of this. See, God always wants to do something bigger. We get so focused on us that we miss the bigger picture. You know, in this message, I'm going to be pointing to Jacob, because Jacob was a great example of a man given a blessing. He pursued that blessing. He had the blessing, but the blessing wasn't enough 
because it wasn't big enough in him. He went forth and he was always running and always trying to make it happen. It was all about him. But the blessing was bigger than him. And the blessing sought to bring him to a place that yes, he was blessed, but he was blessed to be a blessing. And it was only at that dire situation where he's told to go back into the land and he comes to this place where it is all lost. He doesn't have the strength to overcome Esau. And now it's not just about him, he's got a family. And so he has to position himself, puts his family behind him. And he has to stand and face uh, the enemy first. He has to be the one that's out there in the front. But he cannot overcome the enemy till he first encounters the Lord. See, many of us have experiences. We have experiences with the word, experiences where we get a promise. And it's something nice like that little birthday card. Oh, it blessed us in many ways. But it wasn't the life that God wanted. Because all along God had spoken into the life of Jacob a blessing. And he didn't get it. Smith said this, I will bless thee and make thee a blessing. Thou shalt go out one way, and the enemy shall flee before thee seven ways. When we know the power of the Almighty God, we, never, we need never be afraid of any weapon that is formed against us. Believing the Lord of hosts will rise up and will stand against the enemy. God's power upon us, His wonderful benediction are on us. His provident of promise written down for us is to make us ready in every day under all circumstances to know that he has, who has promised will surely fulfill it. What a wonderful Christ. God has chosen us for us to be in the midst of a blessing. The power of the highest overshadowing, the glory of the Lord, uh, a reward and before, sorry, uh, behind us and before us. Who is able to withstand the almightiness? God breathe upon us this morning so that we may receive the endowment, the enrichment, and all the enrichment of heaven crowned with the blessing. See, it took a place where Jacob had to wrestle with the Lord all night until finally he trowned and says at the break of dawn, I can't let you go until you bless me. But it was the very one who had blessed him so many times before. But Jacob never understood until that moment what the blessing meant. That it had life to it. It wasn't just nice words. But it was a decree that came from the Supreme Court of Heaven. A judgment in his favor. Not just a judgment, but it had life and power behind it. Because God watches over his word to perform it. It's not us just coming to a promise box and selecting something and saying, I like that. But it is a word spoken from the very heart of the Father for you. And it breaks you first because you recognize, like Jacob, how disqualified you are. And you discover the depth of His mercy towards you. You understand how rich His mercy is towards others. And that his heart breaks not just to bless you, but to bring you to a place where you're blessed to be a blessing. That you might manifest him through you. I look at this generation, and maybe you know what I'm talking about, where you try to talk and tell them about the Lord, and they're so hardened. They are trained. There's such a narrative in this hour that's anti-Christian, that when you share something about Jesus, they already have all their arguments and reasons why not to believe you. And they've seen the fake. But the one thing that they need is the one thing that they have to see demonstrated in their lives is Jesus. A life so radically changed because as I stand persuaded by the promise, the promise has to change me. Because the promise makes you the promise does something to you so that the world sees that you truly are in a living epistle. They may never 
have read the scriptures. Remember, in this hour, most of them don't even know the word. But they see in you something. They see a life so radically changed. Smith said this, The Lord shall lead us forth from victory unto victory. The Lord's people. Oh, what a blessing to know that we are the fruit of the Lord. His people are the precious fruit of the earth. We are here on this earth to make a difference. We are here blessed with the anointing and the presence of the living God. And everywhere we go, we have such an impact. When we go into a place that's so filled with strife, we bring a peace. Let me tell you something. Your house should be so filled with peace and absent of strife because of you. Because of the presence of the living God on you. Every need met, every sickness must go. Why? Because of the abiding presence and the blessing that it brings. We are different. We're not just some religion that has some opinion of who God is. But we are those that have a living relationship with the living God whose words live in us, change us, transform us. Not by the flesh, not by our doing. And maybe you've tried to walk and act holy and change the old and you failed a thousand times. But I'm grateful for the mighty, wonderful ministry of the Holy Spirit. And as I spend time with Him, it's the continuing in His presence. It's the continuing seeking His face. It's the continuing holding fast the promise and crying out to Him. Knowing that what He said He will surely do. Crying out. Until that word in you gets so big. Oh, I pray that in the name that is above all names, that this day your vision of the Lord God would grow. That He would expand the pegs of the tent of the vision He has given of the promise in you. That is so big that it gets to the place that it's beyond your ability to make it happen. And that it is only by His doing. That place that as you see Him move and bring it to pass, you are forever wrecked. Because He wants to do something great in you. And then He has something more. Oh, we look at that one promise, but that's only the beginning of where He wants to take us. And He wants us to have memorials of victories, of the things that He's done in our lives, so beyond us, that the world might see a real testimony of Him. Smith said this, Are you ready? You say, what for? Oh, for His blessing that shall fill your life overflow you, change you. Are you ready? What for? To get a childlike simplicity and look into the face of the Father and believe that all His promises are yea and amen to you. Are you ready? What for? To be awakened into that spirit of acquaintance that believe all things and dare to ask the Father. See, a lot of times we're not fully persuaded and our prayer life is weak. Our prayer life is ineffective because we're concerned about what exactly is the Lord's perfect will for our lives. But as we linger, I look at that Jesus facing perhaps one of the greatest decisions of his life, the choosing of the 12 disciples, continued all night, and I believe it's Luke 6, 12, run there, all night in prayer, seeking the Father so that he would know. See, most of us don't linger long enough. We want to pray a quick prayer and it's done. But there's this relationship that's built by the lingering, by the getting to know. Oh, how many people, how many precious friendships do you have? How many of them were forged in spending time in critical moments in your life? They were there for you. Those places where you spent that extra moment and you truly got to know them and there was something about that you discovered in them that so blessed you. See, there's something but as we spend the time seeking His face, wanting to know Him, that we get glimpses of who He really is. And that's the place where we become fully persuaded by His promises. Because we're not just reading words from a book. 
but we're reading the very words breathed by the Father from the book that is blood-sealed covenant words that cannot and will not fail that are for you. They are your covenant right and you stand before the Supreme Court of Heaven where all the authority is and God says, I say yes to you and I say amen to you and that blessing and that promise is yours. Take it for I will surely do it for you. Not trying to make the Lord do anything He doesn't want to do, but rather see in your life and through your life the purpose that God has. Smith said, so God has a plan for us to show us that without we understand the scriptures of our life. Though it be wonderful, we have prophecy, and beautiful is prophecy, divine prophecy. Though we have all faith to move mountains, if we lose the main factor, we shall produce the governing principles, but we have nothing. But if we are so balanced by the power of the Spirit, every act would be an act with such divine quality that the people would know in a moment, as they have perfect judgment, as they did the day when they saw Peter and John, although they were little and had not gone through college courses, they had something which expressed to them a fact. They had been in a place of changing of character and language. They had been with the Master. See, they looked, and we see that God, in the birthing uh, of the church, didn't choose people of great influence, of great education, but He chose nobodies. And you may look at how disqualified and how lacking in skills you are to fulfill the promise. But that's how God does it. He comes and He gives a promise to those that He wants to demonstrate His great mighty power through and make of you. It's always beyond what you think because His Word is so filled with life, it reproduces. And it reproduces in you Himself so that the way He thinks, we think. The way He walks, we walk. It becomes our new nature so that I am being changed as I linger, holding fast to that promise. Not trying to overcome the old me, not trying to be a better me, but simply surrendering, allowing the Word to produce in me. See, I look at, there's so many things that we inherit genetically. I can't do much about it, I can try. And it's the same thing, see, we have to understand that spiritual DNA that's been imparted to us, that as we surrender, it begins to manifest, be realized in your life. And as we do and abide in the Word, we feed that. We begin to feed the new man so that we become like him. The world is not reading the Word. It doesn't have any real opinion. It sees a religious version of Jesus and it wants nothing to do with that. And if you're broken, seeing the world saying, I wish you could see the one that touched me, changed me, then let them see him through you. Let them see him as your life is changed, as your very character, your nature, all those things that they knew you once were all the negatives, the bads, as He works in you because you pursue Him. You give Him the time and the place, and you trust in His Word and say the Word. I believe one of the first things we do is preach the Word to ourselves. We spend a lot of time preaching to others. Preach the promise to you. Preach the promise until the promise makes you, changes you, and brings you to the place that you are fully persuaded by that promise, building line upon line, precept upon precept, until you know. Can you imagine if you had to go before a court and argue your case for something? You would go with case law. You would go and not just say, ah, this is my right, but you would prove it. You would bring evidence. You would bring case law to show this is how in the past courts have ruled. So I have a right to this. So you would get in the Word and you would build your case and you would stand. And as you get in this place of spending time with the Father, He's not there to argue against you. He's there to argue with you. 
He's there to build that thing in you, to bring greater clarity and to show you the greater boundaries of what he wants to do, to bring you to place like Abraham, look up and look all around to see what I want to do, how I want to bless you, to make you a blessing. We're looking for this and God has something more. And he said, if I can get you out of the box that you put yourself in, and if I can get a, a bigger vision of me in you, we're so hindered, held captive by what we see, the symptoms, the problems, the situations that speak loud and bring a lot of evidence. But they are temporal and subject to change. His word is eternal and remains. Smith said, so I pray you to think seriously in your heart because you have to be in the world, not of it, personal manifestation of the living Christ. Just as Christ was walking about on the earth, you have to walk about as a son of God with power and manifestation because the people have not the time to read the Bible. So you have to be a walking epistle, read and known of all men. Seeing that this is so, and that you have the, to rightly see that Jesus is the Word, and you have to believe the Word of God and not change it because of the people with their other opinions. Take the Word of God. Take the Word of God. It will furnish you in every good stand. See, most of us try to simply blend in the pressure, peer pressure to compromise and be like the crowd, to be accepted. But those who want to see the promise manifested are Abrahams who know who they are in Christ and walk from the world. They may be in it, but they're not of it. We're here to change things. We're here to be a voice and not blend in because we know him. Oh, I pray that you know him to the place that you realize that I want nothing of this world. This world has nothing to give me. I need him. And in that place, you stand and say, I recognize they need him too. And how will they know him? Except those who are sent. Send me, Lord. Let me know it. Oh, Father, let your promise so come forth and bring Jesus glory that the world might see, the world might know. We need those in this hour who would dare stand up as living epistles. In a time where there's so many fake believers who've learned formulas, fabricated things. I want the real. I want to be real. I want His promise to so change this life that people see it. And that's a process. Smith said this, Whosoever believes. So I have an extravagant, an extravagant God with extravagant language to make me an extravagant person in wisdom. You have an extravagant God, think about that, who has an extravagant language revealed in His Word. He speaks and acts and walks so differently than anything we know. But He's making you an extravagant person, unlike anything on this earth. And He has to separate and bring you out to bring you in. As long as we cling to the world, we miss it. As long as we cling to the world's solution, we fall short. But in a reckless, full surrender to Him, trusting that what He said He will surely do, in that place of weakness, His strength is perfected. Smith said this, No man, because he makes a blunder, fails to succeed in life. But it is when he makes the blunder twice. No person who fails once closes the high calling. Therefore, the Word of God says, when you repent, repent with godly repentance, that you will never do the same thing again. You have to give in. You have to brace yourself up. The day is young. The opportunities are tremendously large. God help you not to give in. Believe that God can make you afresh and turn you into another man. You may see yourself. And the enemy, the accuser, the brethren, constantly painting the picture of this worthless person, all the things you've done wrong. And it may be true as of today, but it does be true of right now and going forward.
I'm so grateful for the power of the blood and to truly repent and say, God, change this man. And to understand, Holy Spirit, I can't do it of myself. I've tried and failed so many times. But you can change me. You can take this frail earthen vessel on a fallen planet and you can make it shine with your glory. You can reveal its glory, your wonderful glory, through the cracks, through the brokenness. And you can take this vessel as I yield it and allow you to take this lump of clay, put it on the wheel, and let the potter work it to produce a vessel that brings such honor to him that I might reach one, two, hundred thousand, whatever it may be, but to live for you and understand that that promise is not about me. It's more than me. Do you get this, what I'm saying? See, we are looking at a promise. You may have a need right now. It's dire. But God is saying, listen, I give you a promise that I will meet the need, but it's more than that because I want to make of you and to do something in you so that there's other lives that will be touched and changed, that the blessing I put on you might flow through you and reach and touch those around you, that it's a true witness, that it is a declaration in the midst so that those that see the walls of Jericho fall as you make a stand trusting that what God promised you will be touched. See, the world needs to see a real Jesus with real answers to real problems, not a fabricated formula, but they need to see in the people, the everyday people walking it out, standing on his word, walking it through. And as you walk with him as a father with a child, because that's what he is, and he comes and he walks with you and says, come with me, let me show you, let me lead you, let me teach you. I have my eye upon you, correcting you, comforting you, edifying you, so that as you know that he's there with you, that promise grows day after day. You continue in it. Don't continue in the storm. Don't continue in the problem. Oh, we like to think so long about the problem and the circumstance we go over and over. We're facing a sickness and we got to know everything about it. I'm not against finding out the details, but there comes a point. Okay, God, I know what I'm facing. Now I need to know the promise and I'm going to bake myself in it. I'm going to overflow until the promise so exceeds the problem. Until God, you are much bigger in me than any giant that surrounded me or challenging me. Smith said, he talked about how he faced problems and how he tried to fix them by himself. And he says, I had another human plan then. I tried my friends. The same thing. Then I went to my lovely wife. Oh, she was a darling. She was holy. I went to her and, and I said, Oh, mother, I am in a hard place. I know, she said. I tell you what you have never done, my dear. What? You have never gone to God once about this thing. That is the secret. When you get out of the will of God, then you will try on your own way. Don't get out of the will of the Lord. Get into it. There are seasons and times where we go through winters, where God is killing that which is around us and it's hard, but you hold on to the promise. That's a season to build the hope, to build the vision, and to kill and to crucify the old, because God wants to make of you as he brings you out to bring you in to that very promise. We just want a quick fix. We just want, I'm asking, now give me. And God says, I want to make you. I want to make of you a blessing. He's already given them all. But this is the place where he wants to make of you. And I pray that this word penetrates, impacts, and touches you so that you see and now have eyes open to see those around that truly need to see His mercy, His grace, to see that touch, to see the life, to see the truth. But it first must wreck you. 
I can't bring a message of deliverance to a world until the word has delivered me first. Smith said, it's a lovely place. Sorry, it's lovely to have a place to go to pray. All of those places to pray where, you're open, where you open your eyes to see if you see him in reality. He is so near. Add to walk with God. We preach a lot in the secret place and you need to have that place some way, somehow that you get alone. It's not as much a place, but a position. It's that place where I seek his face, that hunger and thirsting after. And you may have a, a prayer closet you go into. But it's more than that. And I pray that you get what I'm saying. When you're in love with somebody and you want to be with them, you want to connect, you find ways to text. And as you do, you are suddenly caught up into something instantly as if they are there. You are blown, uh, uh, unaware of the world around you. It's you and them. And this is what God wants. Because many people can get into a prayer closet, but they still carry the cares of the world. They still are fixed on the things of life. But when He becomes everything, then you find the position. In that place of surrender and pursuit and hunger and holy desperation. And may the Lord increase our desperation this day in us. Increase that hunger. God, I need more of you. Sometimes I think, God, there can't be somebody more desperate than I feel right now. And maybe that's what you feel. God, increase our desperation. Stretch us. Take us further. Because we've got to continuously do this and press forward. It's a sowing. And as you continue to sow, you find there comes a day of harvest. Smith went on to say, Father, I said, you know all about it. If you will forgive me this time, I will never trouble you again as long as I live with anything like this. And then the word of wisdom came. He has it. And yet it was the most ridiculous word I've ever heard in all my life. The Lord said, go see this brother. I came downstairs and I said, he has spoken. I knew he would. Yes, but you could see he said something that was so ridiculous. Believe it, she said. It will be all right. God speaks to you and you know what it means and it's all right. But mother, he said, you hardly think it could be right. He has told me to go. And so we go. And there's this place, you know, where God all of a sudden, the right season is we come seeking Him first. See, we seek people first. We claim we stand on a promise, but when the trials come, you run to somebody else first, not the Lord. Until you've heard and you know, because it will change your conversation with that person. Your words betray your heart. And if we are open and honest before the Lord and allow the Spirit of God to convict us, we would realize how all we have walked in unbelief. We tried to persuade the Lord. We tried to speak the right words in front of Him. But our words betray us in front of friends and family. The people we run to as if they are the answer. But He is. Before you go to the doctor, before you go to this, go to Him and to His Word. Hear what he has to say, and he will give you the right word. I'm telling you, he gives information on the need-to-know basis only. He may not tell you all the specifics, but he will begin to tell you, go and do this, and you just step out in faithfulness. And along the way, he will tell you something more, or you'll find that you do something, and you say, why did I do that? And the Spirit of God just guided you to do that. So that you find yourself at the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Because God wants to make you in this process as you simply walk in obedience. And as you do, He grows in you. And you know your, His hand is upon you. And you know He's heard you. I like to think about Enoch. Enoch walked with the Lord in a dark time. It was a challenging, difficult time. But Enoch was kept by the walk. 
and you are going to be kept by your walk with the Lord. We may be in a difficult, dark, perilous hour, but God is keeping you by the walk as you pursue Him. So often we want the instant, and you will find the reason God has that perfect time is He's making you and keeping you by the walk. So never be in a rush or a hurry. No, He's got it. If you will stay with Him, you will stay in the place of peace and the strife goes. Let me finish with this. May the Lord, and this is by Smith, may the Lord give to you this morning wisdom so that you may rightly divide the word of truth. Walk in the fear of the Lord. Be an example to the saints. Never take advantage of the Holy Ghost, but allow the Holy Ghost to take advantage of you. Let me read that again. Never take advantage of the Holy Ghost, but allow the Holy Ghost to take advantage of you. I've come to the conclusion, which is very beautiful in my estimation. Once I've thought I possess the Holy Ghost, but I've come to the conclusion that He has to entirely be the possessor of me. Amen. We may receive Him. I'm so grateful for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But the place that we're meant to walk in is where we're not just possessing Him, but He possesses us. Full out surrender. A walk day after day. And in that place you stand knowing that He watches over His Word to perform it for you, that He will not and cannot fail, that He goes with you, and that where He goes, you are kept, because He goes before you and He stands behind you, and that you are blessed with every spiritual blessing, that His promises He watches over to perform, that He is the one that makes it happen, not you. You are meant to be a witness a living epistle that the Holy Spirit is writing those words right onto your heart. And like spiritual DNA being imparted to you, it changes you, making you a son and a daughter of the living God. I really pray this message has blessed and encouraged and helped you and stirred in you a bold faith and a real hunger and desperation to get in to the secret place. That if you have missed it and blown it, that you would right now, even right now, repent and get washed by the blood of Jesus. Don't allow the accuser of the brethren and that voice of the enemy any authority or right in your life. Don't look to the wrong sources for validation, but look to him and to his word. Humble yourself under his mighty hand and be open and say, God, give me eyes to see. I'm willing to be corrected. I'm willing to be changed and transformed by your spirit. Let Him give you a bigger vision so that you see that it's beyond you and begin to cry out not just for yourself, but to stand in the gap for those around you, that the blessing might come on you and go through you, that they might be blessed. We are here as salt and light. We're here for a purpose to bring Him glory. And while we're in this world, we're not of it. So let us walk as the children of the Lord children of light, shining brightly in this dark hour, arising and shining that the world might know, standing fully persuaded, so that like David we run to the battle, knowing that the giant that challenges us must come down. Amen. If this word has blessed and encouraged you, in the name that's above all names, so I'm asking you to please like, share, subscribe, and give your comments, because as you do, you really help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google. I feel the powerful presence of God, and I just so want to bless and encourage you right now. May that anointing fall afresh on you. May God pour in you fresh oil and fresh wine. And now, word, let it be stirred up. And may the vision of the Lord grow in you even right now. Father, in that name that is above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. Now, thank you, Father. Then I would ask, would you consider becoming a partner with us? prayer partner, financial partner. We want to see big things this year. We're going to do new documentaries. Oh, we've got so much material, so much new stuff that I'm so excited to share. It takes money, it takes time, but it also takes prayer partners so that we have the impact, that we deliver the word accurately. So I need both. 
and whatever God puts in your heart, would you consider becoming a partner, whether officially or not, to stand with us, to see lives touched and changed, backsliders brought back, and believers running boldly for Jesus and fulfilling the high call of heaven. That is our goal. That is our vision. For more information, simply go to robertpairs.org and go to the partner page. I just want to thank you and as always remind you that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it because through and for Him in the name that is above all names, you know, symptoms, circumstances, situations, the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Thank you.